Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Sunday Worship Service with Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. We are excited about the message you will hear today. We thank God in advance for all the manifestations in your life from the words spoken and believed. So many times we as believers are challenged with troubles on every side, but because of God's love, power, and his word, we see victory. So today we call you blessed in all things. As you listen to the word today, use your faith to turn your situation around to God's glory. So now prepare your heart to hear from the heavenly father as we begin with today's prayer and praise and worship. And then today's message with Pastor Phil. Have a blessed day. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for you, a powerful service this morning. Father, we thank you for each and every person that is watching and that is listening over the airways in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for fresh revelation in Jesus' name. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we just glorify you and we honor you this morning. And Father, we thank you for Pastor Phil as he delivers the word, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that the word is anointed and appointed for this time in our lives. Father, we completely surrender our mind, our will, and our emotions to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise this morning. In Jesus' Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many know we serve a good God, a mighty, faithful, able God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate Jesus today. Woo! Y'all know this song. Come on, sing along. Praise him. Praise him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Lord, you are good, say. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are so good. Jesus, clap, 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 clap your hands, Lord, you're good. People from every nation, generation, we worship you. We 
celebrate you today, Lord, and every day. Your goodness and your mercy endureth forever. Say. So good, you've been real, 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 real good to my family and me. People from every nation. I hear you singing in your homes, in your car, wherever you are. I hear you praising the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. We worship you. For who you are. For who God, he is good. He's an awesome God. You're too big for error, and you're too wise for mistakes. You are a mighty God, perfect in all your ways. You were here. Oh, God, I'm very present now when I am in need. 
Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God. We're going to continue on in the spirit of worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about you can't live without his love. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We rise and declare. No one nowhere compares to your love. You are holy. We stand and we shout. We can't live without your love. For you are holy, God. Hallelujah. Come on, people, of God. Forever, you are holy, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, your love is air, it's everywhere. We breathe you in, nothing compares to the great love you have for us forever. You hold it all together. Our world is in your hands. Your love lasts forever. Now we breathe you in. We can't live without your love. So we rise and declare, no one nowhere compares to your love. We stand and we shout, can't live without, without your love, cause you are. Everybody say, oh oh, hallelujah, forever. You are holy God. Everybody say, oh, 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 hallelujah, forever, you hold it, you hold it all, our world is in your hands, your love lasts forever, we breathe you in, now we can't live, you hold it, you hold it, our whole world is in your hands, Lord. Your love lasts forever. We breathe you. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
that we know that God is our Redeemer, our Sustainer, Author and Finisher of our faith. We can't live without His love. Hallelujah. Without Him, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. He's the one. He's the one. And here's why. Because His love, it frees us. His grace, it keeps us. You are holy. We can't live without your love. It frees us. His grace, it keeps us. You, you are holy. Hallelujah. His love, it frees us. His grace, it keeps us. For you are holy. We can't live without your love. And His grace, Lord, you and we can. Hallelujah. Oh, we can. Hallelujah. We need you in our relationships, on our healing, in our body. Hallelujah. Because why, Lord? We come to know that you hold it all together. Our world is in your hands, God. Through Jesus, your love lasts forever. So we breathe in your Holy Spirit so we can live. Hallelujah. We rise and declare that no one nowhere compares to your love. We stand and we shout. Can't live without your love. Everybody say, oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. Forever you are holy. Hallelujah. You are holy, God. Yeah. We breathe you in. We breathe you in. You're holy, God. Our heart says yes. Our heart says yes. You're holy, God. So we just breathe you in. We just breathe you in. You're holy, God. Hallelujah. So you're God over our relationships. God over our finances. Hallelujah. And you bring peace into our hearts. Peace into our minds. Healing to our body, who are relationships, fill us with your spirit. Hallelujah. Call us to be overcomers, to rise above every situation and circumstance so we can praise you in the midst of it. We can praise you in the midst of it. We can praise you in the midst of it, knowing that we rise above. Hallelujah. But we can't live without your love. We can't live without your love. We can. Hallelujah. We can't live without your love. We can't live without your love. We can't live without your love. Woo! I said we can't live without your love. We can't live without your love. We can't live without you said. We can't live without your love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Phil Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. Man, powerful praise and worship. Are you ready for the word? Glory be to God. Are you ready for the word? Get your Bibles out. Tell you, we got an awesome lesson today. We're going to continue where we left off. I'm telling you, you're going to grow today. You better get a hold of this. Call your call the family in because we're going to get more into the word of God. Come on, let's pray. Father, we we thank you for the word today. I thank you that we've entered into your presence with our praise and our worship. We thank you that your presence is here. And Father, I turn my notes over to you and every thoughts that I may have and my opinion doesn't count. Let your opinion rise today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's go to our, our scripture, our foundation scriptures here. John 15, verses 1 through 5. And we'll look at verse 16. Glory be to God. I tell you that praise and worship had me fired up. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. You need to get ready. We're going to be at a, we're going to be. Uh, at a location very soon that we'll still be online, but you better be ready. We're going to be dancing ourselves around with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praising the Lord. So John 15, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband. Now, you know, you are endowed by the creator to bring a lot of fruit. And because our relationship with our father who loves us, he says, every branch in me that beareth 
not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. We looked at this last week. God will purge or cut off everything that's weighing you down, slowing you down, wearing you down from you being, from you bearing fruit, from you trusting him. He's going to come in and pray if you allow him and, and cut, cut off, cut off those branches that need to be cut off, cut the weeds out that are weighing you down, slowing you down and wear you down from you, from you bearing fruit. Glory be to God. He says in verse three, now you are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can't do nothing. I'm gonna come back to this, especially in this verse. Let's look at verse 16. You have not chosen me. That knocks out all of you who think that you found the Lord. He came after you. But I have chosen you and ordain you that you should go and bring forth much fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now this is a powerful scripture. Let's go to verse five. Cause this is where I wanna to focus today. Verse five, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me, you can't do nothing. We can't bear the fruit unless he's with us. We can't do anything. Let me tell you, your success, a great business idea you got. God drop a business idea into you, a ministry idea, but you can't do nothing without him. There's no way you can do it. Glory be to God. Say that with me. I can't do nothing without him. And I want to talk more about it, why we need him what he's done, what he's provided, so we can bear the fruit. Glory be to God. Why don't you open, matter of fact, look at Ephesians 5.1. And we've been looking at the Amplified. It says, therefore, be imitators of God, copy him, follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. Glory be to God. Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to imitate him. We're going to learn how to imitate Jesus. Glory be to God. Turn to Acts 4.33. Acts 4.33. When you have it, say amen. I can hear you. <laughs> Acts 4.33. And the King James Version, it says, and with great power, it gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. You know, we can never forget that Jesus is everything to us. But look what this scripture talks about. You understand, great grace was upon them all. It wasn't just upon the apostles, but upon everyone. I'm talking here today, something that God has added so you can bear fruit. It says great grace was upon them all. You understand, this was upon them at their home. This was on them at their work. This was upon them at their church. Wherever they were, great grace was there. Glory be to God. See, obviously, Grace is not just one level, because if there's great grace, you understand, that means there's different levels of grace. I want you to hold on to it a moment, because when we talk about grace, we're talking about the favor of God. Glory be to God. But let's look at 2 Peter 3, 18. Look, look what it says. It says, but grow in grace. Oh, here we go. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Remember, we're to grow in favor. See, when you, the word grace and favor are, are intertwined all throughout the Bible. When you talk about grace, you're talking about his favor. But we're supposed to grow in favor. We're supposed to grow in grace. Look at James 4, 6. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Now, I'm not, I'll touch that humbleness uh, a little later, but he says he giveth more grace. So there's different levels of favor. There are different levels of grace. Glory be to God. 
if there's any time in our lives we need more grace, it's now. <laughs> you understand? We need it now. Whether you know it as a believer, you know, any your claim as to any success is for the grace of God. You got saved by grace. You understand? But and by and by faith you receive this grace. See, grace is the un our definition, you have a definition, it's unmerited favor of God. But we need more than that. Woo, it's the unmerited favor, undeserved favor. Glory be to God. We didn't deserve it, but Jesus died. And because he died, you understand, this is upon our life. So there's two questions I want to look at, because I'm talking here about bearing fruit. Without him, you can't do nothing. Two questions I want to look at, and they're, and they're key for you bearing fruit. What is the grace or favor of God? And how do I get more of it? Because I want to know how to get more of this. Don't you want to know how to get more of the favor of God? Don't you want to know how to get more of this grace? Come on, let's don't get comfortable. Glory be to God. You understand? I don't want to just explain this without you experiencing it. So I want you to open up your heart to, to not only to receive and get understanding, but to experience this. Now, we're going to go back to Exodus 33. So go to your Bible. And let's look up. Let's go to Exodus, Genesis, Exodus. In the beginning of the Bible, let's look at 33. Because we want to know what is the grace? What is the favor of God? Because if you know what it is, whew, you'll know how to walk in it. Glory be to God. And I'm talking to many of you who think you know what grace is. All right. I want you to throw out. Everything you learn about grace and favor or favor, and let's let's open up your heart so you can learn. Become teachable. Don't shut us out because I already know what the favor of God is. Well, have you been growing? Ooh, has great grace upon your life? You need to understand what is the favor of God or what is the grace of God. I'm using them to say we talk about favor, we're talking about grace. Glory be God. You understand? Look at Exodus 33. We're going to look at verses 1 to 3. Let me pull up my Bible a minute so I can pull it out. Verse one, and the Lord said unto me, and you know, this, this is actually, let's read. And the Lord said unto Moses, depart and go up to hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying unto thy seed, I will give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Pezzarite the Hivite and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing, verse three, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Now the Lord was angry and disappointed in his people. Moses had went up and spent about a month and a half with God. And he got to think of family. I mean, he just spent time with the Lord. <clears throat> and he's only gone a month and a half. And Aaron was in charge, but the people provoked Aaron, pushed Aaron enough that these people actually lost their mind. They forgot all God had done for them. They forgot about the parting of the Red Sea. They forgot how God was treating them. I mean, it's the manna from heaven. They forgot all about it. They even built a golden calf yeah, as an altar to work for it. And God was like, these are some stubborn and stiff-necked people, stiff-necked people. He was, highly, he was highly angry and was highly disappointed. But let's go further in this. Let's look at verse. Let's go to let's let's go down to verse eleven. And you can take time to read this yourself. Glory be to God. You understand? You know, don't disagree. Let's compare scriptures with scriptures. <laughs> look at verse eleven. And, <clears throat> and and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. I'm in verse eleven. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, verse, verse 12, See thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by thy name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now the way that I that I may know thee and that I may find grace in thy sight and consider this nation is thy people. 
you know, Moses is saying, he says, this doesn't make sense. I have grace, but you're not with me. You understand? I, this is important to me. You understand? If you're telling me I have grace, you know, I'm having your grace, but you're not with me. Verse 13 says, yeah, verse 13. Let me read that again. All right. Now, let, let me read verse 13 one more time. Hallelujah. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by thy name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. And, and so he was, he was actually saying to him, you know, I found, you're telling me I got grace, but, but you're telling me you're not with me. I'll look at another translation of verse 13. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Moses will remind him, yeah, they may be upset, but they're your people. You understand? If you're pleased with me, so yeah, I want to know how to continue and find favor with you. I don't need you to leave me. <laughs> Glory be to God. Look at verse 14. God responds. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Glory. Glory. Notice he says, my presence will go with thee, and I shall give thee rest. Verse 15. Yeah, verse 15. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in thou, it is it, excuse me, is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. You know, Moses was saying in here in verse 14, God says, my presence is with you. And Moses says in verse 15, we don't want to go anywhere without your presence. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. See, the presence of the Lord with you is his grace. This is what makes you different than the world. His presence is with you. This is your favor that is upon you is his presence. And that's what the Lord said. You know what? I'm, I, you know what, Moses, you're right. You understand? I'm going to, I'll show you where my favor is because my presence will be with you. And notice what he says in here. He also says rest. That word rest means peace. Glory be to God. You understand? In other words, he has, he has in other words, with him not only come his presence, but come peace that you can have rest. You know, when you, when hell has no rest and hell has no peace, when you follow, when you stop following the will of God, you're going to, let me tell you, you go, you're going to find no peace and you're going to get no rest. When you do things that you know are out of his will, let me tell you, you fall under the curse and there'll be no peace and no rest. You understand? So if the grace of God is on you, the presence of the Lord is with you to bless you and cause others to bless you. See, favor calls others to bless you. Favor calls others to give you preferential treatment. Glory be to God. Why? Because his presence is on you. When Acts, when it, when it was talked about that, that his favor, his grace was upon him, his presence was on him. And it was growing. Glory be to God. That it had an effect on, on everyone in their work, in their, in, on their jobs, in their homes, in their recreational time. They grew. Glory be to God. Great grace was upon them. Glory be to God. Don't, don't you recognize that the, once you get born again, his presence is upon you. His favor is already there. I don't know if you're one of those individuals that you get up in the morning and say, I thank you, Father, for favor. I shall have favor, preferential treatment today. Woo. And it has a lot to, and what? You're saying your presence is on me. It will have influence. Glory be to God. Woo. You understand? I think it's Isaiah 26, 3. It says, it says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. See, if you're focused on his favor, you're focused on his peace. I don't want to start my day without his peace. I don't want to start his day, my day without his presence. And if, I, if I'm holding on to his presence, I'm holding on to his grace and favor. This grace and favor is going to do things for me so I can bear the fruit that need be done. If this grace and favor is going to do some things that I'm, I don't have the ability to do. This grace and favor will influence people who don't even like me, who can't stand me. But for that moment, whoo, his favor will come upon me. His grace will be upon me. 
Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, we're supposed to experience measures of his grace and his presence and his peace beyond where you are at this point in your life. Wherever you are at this point in your life, you're supposed to have greater peace, greater grace, greater favor. You understand? And greater of his presence. I don't know where you are this, maybe you think you've arrived, you have not arrived till you have greater grace, great, greater of his presence and greater of his peace. So his peace passeth all understanding. You know, a lot of you who, who were going after, you were dealing with addictions and relationships. You went from one man to another, one woman to another. You were looking for peace and the peace only comes through God. Matter of fact, they said that Jesus was full of grace and peace. In John 14, he talked a lot about it. John 18, about his peace. Ooh, and we need his peace. Peace allows you to rest, which makes things easier for you to receive from God. Look at Acts 20. I'm stepping ahead of myself. Holy Ghost, so you're going too far ahead of myself. I'm telling you, th this, this, is so this is so awesome for this time. Greater grace. Look at Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Notice what the scriptures talk about. This grace of favor gives you an opportunity and ability to build you up. You know, you know to see, hear, and, and experience a larger vision of who you are and where you are going with prosperity and peace. See, this grace and favor is able to build you up. I don't know where you're at right now. You may be low, but let me tell you, this word of his grace, you know, grace and favor work hand in hand, and I'm probably have to share, we may have to continue this next week so you can get a better understanding of it. You understand? But, <laughs> but, but listen carefully. This, this grace is able to build you up. You understand? It's able to strengthen you. When you think you can, can't, when it seems too hard, when you have no strength, you have favor and grace. You have his word to overcome any addiction, any sickness, any disease, any wrong thoughts, any mistakes you made in your life. This grace will build you up that you can live for today and not in yesterday. Glory be to God. You understand? It, it, sometimes it seems too hard, but we have his grace. Sometimes when you have no strength, he, you understand, he'll give you strength to overcome. He'll build you up and give you an inheritance, it says, among all of them which are sanctified. In other words, prosperity will flow, increase will flow because of his favor and because of his grace. Let's look a little more at it. Let's look at Psalms 5. We're talking about here, you understand what God gives us and provides for us so we can bear fruit, so we can have success that stays. See, our success is supposed to stay till the next generation and the generation after that. It ain't supposed to be you get blessed on January and lose it on and lose it in March. You understand you're successful in January, but now, now you're broke again. <laughs> you're, 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 you're broken down a full, few months later. So he's giving you grace and favor. Glory. And I'm ministering this word so we can believe it. We know a lot of this, but if you believe this, there should be increase or greater grace in your life. So don't talk to me about what you know. Let's talk about what you believe. And wherever you're at right now, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to still increase in grace, increase in favor, increase of his, his presence. Look at Psalms 511. It says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that, that love thy name be joyful in thee. You know, as a believer, we're supposed to be rejoiceful. We're supposed to have a lot of joy in us. Man, we're, we're not people who sit in the closet and just say, mm, praise God. No, we, when we trust in him, we rejoice. You understand, when you're going through a situation, it's time to rejoice. It's time to praise that God will never leave me nor forsake me. That even though I don't have the ability to come out of this mess, 
God is going to make sure I come out because he's defending me. God will defend you against any onslaught of the enemy. It don't matter what people he use. You understand? (laughs) Glory be to God. Look at verse 12. This is why we're shouting for joy. Look, Look what it says. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Wilt thou compass him, compass him as with a shield? Ooh, Jesus. Boy, that's a powerful scripture. You understand? You know, the word, the word compass or compass means 360 degrees. You understand? This favor is surrounding you like a shield. I mean, it's a shield. Star Trek didn't have anything about some shields. We have a shield around us. I mean, a force shield. Woo. Glory be to God. That's enough to shout. That's enough to praise God. Glory be to God. Because we have this force shield around us. It will defend us. And you understand? You understand? It's his favor. It surrounds us. It, it, I heard someone say, this, this favor has a force. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You, we're, sharing with, we're sharing this with you so you can get, grab a hold of it. This favor is a heavenly reality. The, it's the manifest presence of God. It's the peace of God. It's the strength of God. And it's the protection of God. Glory be to God. That's what this favor is. It's his manifest presence on your life that others have to, it will influence others. It's his peace where you don't have to worry. You don't have to struggle. Glory. That's what, that's what peace does. Peace stops the worry. Peace stops the struggling. It makes walking with God easy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And it surrounds us like a shield. Come on, say that with me. His peace. I'm sorry. His favor surrounds me like a shield. Um, as a matter of fact, even make it better. His favor surrounds me with a shield. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Look at Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You understand? Joy cometh in the morning. Praise in this name. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You understand? In his favor, there is life. Our life depends upon his favor. I like uh, Psalms 30. Uh, let's look at the NIV translation of this. It says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. His favor lasts a lifetime. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at one more translation, the BBE translation. For his wrath is only for a minute, and his grace there is life. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Boy, this thing, it just... It, get, it gets me excited. Let's look at verse 7. We're in Psalms 30. Look at verse 7. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didn't hide thy face, and I was troubled. Now, let, let's look at this. We're, we're talking about his presence, his favor. And it says, has made my mountain to stand strong. Glory be to God. You know, so let's look at another translation so you can understand what he means by your mount to stand strong. And the Amplified says, by your favor, Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face and I was troubled. Notice that his favor has established me as a strong mountain. You know, God can't, God can take someone who's unstable someone who's failure prone and put strength in them, faith in them, grace upon them and make them firm as a mountain. It's through his favor you can, you you have been established. You have been established as a strong mountain. You need to stop looking in the mirror at your mistakes and your past. You need to know that his grace is more than sufficient for you. And through his favor, he will establish you as a strong mountain. You know, when the 
Israelite uh, missed the missed the uh, blessing uh, initially when the met blessing because those first million that's those million that started out many of them never received the promise. One of the reasons were is that they they saw themselves as grasshoppers, but they never knew how the Canaanites and how those people where God told them to go saw them. And when you look at the scripture, they saw them as bigger than they were. See, God will make you a strong mountain that even if you don't think you are, you don't feel you are, you are. He'll have others seeing you as that strong mountain. If you believe in his favor, if you believe in his presence. See, I'm talking here about what you believe. I'm not talking about what you feel. I'm not talking about your past mistakes. Glory be to God. See, we deserve we deserve because of what Jesus did. You understand? Unmerited favor, unmerited grace. And we're supposed to grow in this. And he wants to establish you as a strong mountain. You. I'm talking to you, housewife. I'm talking to you. You understand? Sitting at home. I'm not talking to people just in the fivefold ministry. He's talking about you, believers. You have ex David says you have established me as a strong mountain. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo, he'll make he'll make you just as firm as a mountain. Glory be to God. Come on, receive that today. Come on, I don't know what you're going through, but you need to believe in that favor. You need to believe in his grace. You need to believe. I mean, when you can tell when you believe it because you, you don't want to leave home without it. You don't want to leave home without his favor. You don't want to leave home. Look at Psalm Proverbs 19. Come on, turn your Bible there. Proverbs 19. Let's look at verse 12. The king's wrath is as in the roaring of a lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. Whew. Glory be to God. Mm. You understand? His favor is as dew on the, upon the grass. I like uh, another translation of this. The passion says, the rage of a king is like a roar of a lion, but his sweet favor is like a gentle, refreshing rain. You know, dew, dew can be light or dew can feel heavy. See, what did they say in Acts 20? That his favor, Acts 20, 33, that this favor was upon them. This great grace was upon them. It's like a gentle, refreshing rain. You already know it's on you. See, it, it, it's a part of you. Glory be to God. See, God doesn't want you to bear fruit in your ability. He doesn't want you to be successful in your ability. Because he, he wants you to know that you can't do nothing without him. And he, he's, he's put his presence upon you. He has his favor upon you. He has his grace upon you. And he wants you to let his grace and his favor do the work. <laughs> Woo! Let it do the work. Glory be to God. See, this favor, this grace is not is on you. If there's, if, the, if there's great grace, see, if, if he's talking about this great grace, that means there's different degrees of grace. What would happen if you had 10, 10 times the grace you have now? 10 times the favor, 20 times the favor, 30 times the favor. Whoa, glory. Hallelujah. You understand? What would happen? Glory, because there's different degrees of it. I don't need you settling for the favor you learned four years ago, six years ago. There need to be increase. There needs to be growth. Don't tell me it's growing. Because until you get to great grace, hallelujah, there's different levels. Look at John 1, 16. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. John 1, 16. Let me turn there right quick. Notice what it says. And of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. Here it was talking about Jesus. Because it said the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And it's talking about him in verse 16. It says, and of his fullness have we all received favor for favor. Grace for grace. Look at another translation of this in the Amplified. Come on, let's take our time. 
for out of his fullness, his abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. Woo, glory. In his presence is fullness of joy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You understand? God, he layers his grace. You may have grace upon you, but God can heap another layer upon you. He can put another layer on you. You understand? Remember in Hebrews, it said, come boldly to the throne of grace to find help. Grace is to help you in your time of need. It says, come boldly to the throne of grace. All you have to do is say, I need some help, and grace moves. Any fruit or success you have had in, in your life is through the grace or the favor of God. Just remember, I was just saying, just think if you had 10 more times, 20 more, 40 more times of more favor in your life operating in you right now. Not only would you bear fruit, but it would remain passed down to your children's children. They'll be talking about it. In your world, they have no choice but to discuss it. It will lead people to God. See, God isn't built. See, he's building you up to, so he, as you build his name up. You understand? He wants to build his name through you. You know, things you used to struggle with will be easy to overcome because you have received this grace. You know, there'll be no miracle you could not receive as you grow in grace. You know how many, many of us block miracles through unbelief? There's some miracles that we haven't even received because we haven't grown in grace. There'll be no temptation, trial, or test that you could not overcome when, you, when you're growing in grace. You couldn't even be tempted to go the long way, wrong way. Glory be to God, because you're growing in grace. Glory be to God. Look at Psalms 119. And let's look at verse 58. I entreat thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Now, to get a better understanding, we look at the, another translation. He says, with all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promise. See, you got to want this favor. You got to come after this. That's what the psalmist is telling you. With all my heart, I seek your favor. You're not supposed to leave your day without, without, without saying, I seek and desire more grace today. I seek and desire favor today. Don't you want more favor today? What you des how you desire it determines the outcome. God will never go past your want to. If you don't want it, you ain't going to receive it. It's there for you. Come on, say this with me. I seek and desire more favor, more grace today. Glory be to God. Understand? I, come on, say that one more time. I seek and desire more grace, more favor today. You don't want more struggles. You don't want more worries. You understand? You have to go after your favor. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're supposed to go after his favor. Kingdom of God, part of him is the favor of God. It's his presence. I want more of your presence on me today. <laughs> I want to grow in, in grace. <sighs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So if you understand that grace and favor is, is his presence upon you, Influ influential presence. Glory be to God. That opens doors that were shut. Moves people like never moved before. So I told you it was two questions. What is grace? The next question is, what do I need to do to get more grace? You understand? Grace and faith works together. Yeah, And you're going to learn more about that. But you have to recognize that everything God is, is in his presence. See, you, you got to recognize this. And you have to want his presence upon you. Let me tell you, his presence will be so strong, even though we don't go by feelings, you'll feel his presence. 
you know he's there. When someone tells you no, you know, you hold a minute, I got the favor of God. Glory be to God. Look at Psalms 89, verse 17. Come on, don't get tired on me. I know you're probably sitting up there. You, you may have taken a break to eat something or go with here. Hey, get back, get back on this. Get back to this word. Come on, let's concentrate. Let's stay focused. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because I want more of his presence. Psalms 89, 17 says, For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Exalted means promotion. You understand? He says, For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Glory be to God. Look at another translation of this. I think it's the God's word. It says, because you are the glory of their strength, by your favor, you give us victory. There is nothing in our life we cannot overcome. He gives us the victory through his favor. Why do you win? Because you are favored by him. Not only does he put his favor on you, he, put, he puts favor upon man. See, our power grows by by pleasing him. See, this is the power of influence, which is favor. See, you know, you can say, what can I do for favor, more favor to come on me? You need to please him. And I'm about to point that out. Pleasing him, glory be to God, hallelujah, is how you get more grace. Pleasing him. That's how you get more grace. So let, let, let's look at Proverbs. Come on, say that with me, pleasing him. And now, now don't get now nah, don't get too spiritual on me. Ain't no way I'm pleasing. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he will bless and reward those who diligently seek him. He knows you're not perfect. That's why he gave you first John. You know, verse verse seven. He, you know, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and wipe your slate clean as if you've never done it. Glory be to God. Pleasing him, are you with me? You understand, allows you to have more faith, more grace, excuse me, more, more favor and more grace. Look at Proverbs 16 and 7. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 16 7 said, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Ooh, that's powerful. You understand? I, look at another translation of this. He said, when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his haters be at peace with him. How many of you got some haters? Don't raise your hands. Some of you got haters on your job. Or they may hate you because of the color of your skin or because they don't like you because you think you're better than everyone else. But sometimes we got haters even in our families. You understand? <laughs> you know, we have pe anybody talking against you. You understand? With it, haters. But when a man's way please the Lord, he makes. How does he make it? Through his favor. He'll have a hater give you a promotion. I heard someone give a testimony about how this person was really up against them and, um, and was doing everything they can to deny their promotion because they were working and doing what they're supposed to do. This person wasn't. You understand? And see, they, they had to fight from being personal. They fought. By, they say I had to fight my feelings because this person was trying to make this personal with me. But I decided to trust in the Lord. I decided to, to obey what he leads me. And the Lord told him many times, keep your mouth shut, keep moving on, just bless her. When other people came around her and, and talked about, you see what that person doing to you? You see what they do? She just blessed her. Well, she's a blessing. And she kept, she kept her tongue right where her way pleases God. The person who hated her, who talked about her, are you with me? End up giving her a promotion that she really didn't even deserve. He could make your haters be at peace with you. He did that with the Israelites. The Egyptians were just, they were slavery and slavery. And then God just, he put the favor of God on them where the Egyptians not only said you can leave, but gave them all their gold, all their riches. They left every, they took everything of value from those Egyptians. The slaves took it all. Glory be to God. 
You see, they had peace with him. God can do this. Or when a man's ways are pleasing to him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's look at uh, Proverbs 16. We will just look at Proverbs 16, 7. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I apologize with it. I'm just so excited about this. You know, your enemies, say this with me, my enemies will be made to have peace with me. That's why you don't have to talk about them. That's why you have to take it personal. Hold a minute. You may be talking about me one way. I've had many people who put me down, talked about me, what we preach, and end up calling me for prayer. They found peace. They found peace with me. End up blessing me with different situations. They found peace with me. Enemies could be anyone that's a believer or non-believer. But he will make, he'll make his, your haters have peace. And I'm talking here today, so we don't, see, we want to keep our ways pleasing to him. That when I'm being attacked and people coming up against me, even coming up against my family, I want to make sure I'm, I'm pleasing him. I want to stay in his way. Because what? The same people that are coming up against us are the ones that probably be blessing us in the long run. Because he'll make them have peace with me. Glory be to God. Look at uh, Psalms 41, verse 10 and 11. You understand? Matter of fact, let's let's go back. Let's go back to Proverbs 16, 7. Holy Spirit said, go back to that. You know, many, many of us believe that if you sell out to God, you will have more troubles out of your enemies. You know, higher level, higher devils. But this scripture goes against that thought. When a man's ways are pleasing the Lord, he'll make even his haters. His enemies be at peace with him. See, this scripture goes against that. God doesn't want you to be thinking about more trouble. He wants you to be sold out to him. That even the ones the devil is using to come against you will have peace. It'll confound the devil because he has a strategy against your life, but you're not giving in to the strategy. You're going to please God. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I'm talking here, God, that's why God is purging you. He's trying to pull out those, those, you know, a lot of pride. You know, many of us, when we talk about pride, sometimes we talk about what, when we take ownership of something that God has done. But you know, a lot of pride is when you defend yourself. You know, some of you, you know, some of you parents, you're too quick to defend your children instead of hearing from God so he can defend them. Sometimes we take sides too quickly and pride gets in the way. And you can tell it's pride because you get in the flesh, you get with your emotions. You know, you're you going to respect me. Nobody going to disrespect me. Oh, no. He defends you. See, that's pride when you take, when you take charge to, to defend yourself. That's pride. That's pride when somebody talks about you and you take it so personally that you end up talking about them, just putting evil for pun evil. You, you, our job is to is 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 to do his is to please him, because I'm telling you, in your spirit, in your heart, there's a voice. God is talking to you. Shut your mouth. Don't take it personal. Bless them. He blessings upon them, because that same person, who will have peace with you. It just makes the difference. That's pride when you come into that effect. Sometimes we confuse pride. We confuse it as us uh, uh, saying I all the time. And it was a good teaching years ago. When you use I, it's pride. But, but see, when you take, when you defend yourself, when you decide to protect yourself, <clears throat> pride comes in the way. I'm not talking about following God. I'm not, like right now in the COVID-19, I'm under the secret protection of the God, of the, of the most high God. I'm on Psalms 91. He's protecting me. He's protecting my family. That's why I can boldly say that this COVID-19 has to go in the name of Jesus, that it will not be a part of my life, will not be part of the people in this church's life. We will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. See, I'm, I'm working what's pleasing to him instead of giving in to the fear because COVID-19 and coronavirus and the racial disharmony, it's, sometimes it can put a lot of fear in you. 
that you feel you got to take a stand without God. Please don't 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 shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Glory be to God. So we need to get a hold of this more so than enough. That's why he's got favor and grace. That the people that don't like you will rule in your favor. Glory be to God. The people have a reputation to put you down will lift you up. You understand? Because your haters will have peace with you. I'm spending time on this because some of you must be going through some situation where people are attacking you, coming up against you, speaking against you. Hey, just, just make your ways pleasing to God. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. That means I gotta, when you start, you, when you start trusting in what God says more than what you feel, more than what your emotions, what the others say, you're pleasing God. That's faith. You're trusting in a word. You're trusting in his voice. You're trusting what he shared with you. And your ways are pleasing to him. You, you'll stop having issues with your, with your ex and with the father of your child and the children. You'll stop having those because you'll start doing things that are pleasing. That even the ones that want to come up against you, Corey, will have peace with you. You're not railing for railing. You're not talking and putting them down. No, your, 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 your ways are pleasing to God. And you don't, all you got to do is look in the word to find what's pleasing. All you got to do is look at the word. And if you don't know, you know what he'll do? You got the Holy Ghost in you that's your teacher and your God. It will direct you toward the truth. It'll direct you toward your peace. It will show you where your favor and grace lies. And it lies within him. Glory be to God. Look at Psalms 41. Glory. Psalms 41. He said, but thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorites me because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Ooh, glory. Isn't that awesome? You see, when I ask of you, I know that you favor me. You know how you know God favor you? Your enemy doesn't have victory over you. Your enemy is never supposed to have victory over you. Because as you grow in grace, oh, he may have, he may have appeared to have victory, but let me tell you, I'm growing in grace. I'm getting up in the morning saying, Father, I want more of your grace. I want more of your favor. Because a key sign that God favors you is when your haters don't have victory over you. You could be going believing for a car that you can't afford, and you've been looking at Humpties or Humpies or whatever they call them, and used cars, and you decided now you're going for a new one, one that never been driven before. And people are telling you you can't do this because of your credit report. But you'll know God favors you because you receive that car. That car becomes yours. I've heard testimonies of this houses and things. Your enemy doesn't have the last word because of God's favor. He'll move a bank, he'll move a person, woo, just to bless you. He'll go out of his way just to bless you. Because guess what? Because of that favor, that, if, that, if, that, that anointed influence is upon your life. His presence is upon your life. You're not mealy mouth, you're not screaming, say, I hope it works, I, you know, I'll try it. No, you know, glory be to God. See, he'll prove it. His favors on your life when the, when the enemy or naysayers do not have the last word. Glory be to God. Let's even look at it carefully. Look at Ecclesiastes seven twenty six. Come on, go there. I hope you're taking notes. Glory be to God. Father, I need your presence today. I need your favor upon my life. And that's what you should be saying. He says, and I find more bit, uh, and I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands, who pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. See, bleak, look what this scripture is saying. Pleasing God can give you, give you grace to resist any temptation. Here, here's a temptation coming. You understand? A tenta the temptation is there. Temptation is there. And you know, you, because of his grace, you understand, you, you get over, you overcome that temptation. I like 1 Corinthians 14, 10. And, and, it's, and it says, 
excuse me, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with that temptation, always make a way to escape that you may not be, you may not bear it. You understand, when you put your trust in him, whoo, glory. See, you understand, there's a way out to every trap of the enemy. There's a way out for every temptation. And all you need to do is say, Father, I just need your help in this. Come boldly to the throne of grace and find help in your love. Know, he always has an escape route. You start doing the things that are pleasing to him. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to get out of this. I go boldly to the throne of grace. I ask for help. And you open up your eyes, you'll see the, you'll see, you'll see the escape route. Glory be to God. It'll be right there for you. Instead of you getting your emotions, getting afraid. You know, you know, the only reason we give into the temptation, I've learned this myself. You understand is when I don't look for the escape route. I don't come boldly to the throne of grace. You understand? And, and, and seek help. I don't come to the throne of favor. See, that is pleasing God when you come to him, expecting him to show you a way out. See, you, you're pleasing God that you're looking for biblical solutions, you understand, instead of you figuring it out. See, that's pleasing God. That's why he's working for you to grow. When you, If you are a worrier, let me tell you, under pressure, you're not going to please God. You're going to have to learn to cast your cares onto him because he cares for you. And I got too much favor. Matter of fact, I have favor with God. We're going to talk about that more. You have favor with God and you have favor with man. And because I have favor with God, he's going to look out for my children, even though they're acting like, acting like they don't even know nothing about God. So I don't have to have a care. That's pleasing to God. Glory be to God. You cannot do the things that please without faith. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. There's always an escape route with temptation. It could be, a t you know, it's tempting you to lie, tempting you to hide something. T you understand? Tempting you to run. Tempting you to go back drinking. Tempting you to go back in addictions. You understand? Tempting you to be, you know, to be loose in morals but there's always an escape route. You understand? And that's where, where you understand. That's why you come to the throne of grace and say, Lord, I need the escape route because I have, I, I have your presence upon me. I have your grace upon me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, look at Jesus. Just look at Jesus. Look at Luke 240. Now, because we're supposed to imitate God. We look at Ephesians 5.1. We're supposed to imitate God. We're supposed to imitate Christ. Look what, look what uh, it says. And the child grew, it's talking about Jesus, and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So the presence of God was on him as he grew. Luke 10, I'm sorry, Luke 2, look at verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So Jesus grew, grew, and you understand, into what? Great faith. You understand? He grew from when he was a child, when he became an adult. You understand? He grew. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He grew in there. There were times when, when, they, when the, when the uh, Jews wanted to kill him, and he would walk right by them, looked them in the eyes, and they couldn't even touch him. They couldn't even touch him. And he walked right through them because of the favor on his life. Walked right past his enemies. It's, it's going what David said, thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runneth over. His presence runneth over. You understand? <laughs> his presence runneth over. That's what that cup means, the anointed cup of oil. That's his presence. It's just running over me. I can sit in the presence of my enemy and eat well. Eat good. Who glory. If Jesus increased in wisdom, I can increase in wisdom. If Jesus can increase in favor, I can increase with favor. Glory be to God. Come on, say that with me. If Jesus can increase 
in favor. I can get increased in favor. Ooh, Father, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at John 8. I'm talking about Jesus here. Look at verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that pleaseth me, that pleaseth him. Mm-hmm. Remember when Jesus was baptized and God said, you understand, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now, some of you may say, well, that was Jesus. You know, I'm not Jesus, but this was Jesus as a man. He went through every temptation, trial or test was thrown against him and he overcame it. You understand? (laughs) You understand? You know, Jesus said, I do all things that please him. And Jesus, he overcame every challenge that came upon him with the same grace that's on us. You understand? The same grace that's on you was on Jesus. I'm gonna stop here for a moment because, you know, pleasing him starts with a desire to please him. Do you desire to please him? I'm I'm answering that question right now. I'm talking to you at the moment, come close to the, to the to the to the to your screen a moment to your phone. All right. Do you really want to please him? Do you desire it? See, we can confess all day, you know, that we want favor, but do you want to please him? This is how you get the favor by pleasing him. When you make a determination, you want to please him, you know, in, in every area of your life, your career, your family life, your recreational life. Are you with me? Your ministerial life. Do you want to please him? Because this is a start on how you grow in favor. You want to stay where you are right now? That's your call. I want to grow. I, 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 there's some miracles I have not, I have not experienced. Woo, hallelujah. And and then he wants to he wants to heap. I want this great grace. I want to grow in grace. I want another layer. I want 10 times more favor than I have right now, 20 times more than I have right now. You see, it's all on you. We have not because we ask not, or we ask to miss. But you have to desire this. I know some of you are going through some situation in your life from financial, personal, depression, oppression. You listen to me really carefully. Start desiring to please him. Excuse my grammar. Desire to please him. This is where you need to start your day. As you make your confessions every day, some of you spend time with the Lord. You, I, I desire to please you more today. You can't look at yesterday. You can't look at the future. You look at today. So I don't want to hear about all the mistakes you made. I don't want to hear about what people say is going to happen in the future. You need to desire him more of his presence today. You need to desire to please him today. Come on, say that with me. So hey, you, you come close enough? Glory be God. Let, let, let's, let's repeat this after me. Come on, you. Do you really desire to please him? Or do you just want to be the way you are? So why don't you say this with me? Come on, as you get closer. Forgive me, Lord, for anything that has displeased you about me. Come on, forgive me. For any and all disobedience, rebellion, or stubbornness, I choose today your will, not mine, be done in my life. I ask that you re- that you that you that you re- renew me. I ask that you revive me throughout my whole life, my daily routines, my work life, my family life, my home life, my church life, my recreational life. If there's anything that displeases you in any of these areas, I ask you to show that to me each and every day. Help me to see. Help me to realize I can do nothing 
without you. Show me what pleases you. I delight to do your will. Oh Lord, forever and ever, I want to do your will. I want to grow in grace. I want to grow in wisdom. I receive this by faith in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Boy, if you if this is the first time you made this, you made this statement. If you really listen to me, there's some of you coming back to God. And if you're one of those that's saying, you know, I need to get back on track. I'm not doing things that please him. Glory be to God. God wants to welcome you back home. Are you with me? He wants to welcome you back home because you've been away from him too long. You think it's something spiritual, but it's a relationship that is spiritual. He wants, he wants you to grow in grace. And you've been trying to do things by yourself. God wants you back home. Glory be to God. And, and if you made that confession today, let me tell you, you're back on target. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I want you to contact us. That did end the service. It, it put, it, there'll be, there'll be a, a, a way to contact us. But God wants you back with him. And if you're not seeking to please him, you're way off track. If you're not growing in grace, this is the time we're going to grow in grace because of how much we love God and how much he loves us. Glory be to God. You get something out of today's message? Glory be to God. Matter of fact, bow your heads for a moment. And maybe some of you here, first time viewer, first time on this broadcast, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I give you an opportunity to accept him right now. I want you to accept the grace of God, his presence of God. Glory be to God. I want you to accept his power. Maybe you've been doing things on your own and you heard about God, but you didn't, but you haven't received him. So today I give you that opportunity. All you have to say out of your mouth is this. Repeat it with me. Lord Jesus, I come to the throne of grace and I, and I thank you that Jesus died and rose again just for me. I have a savior. He saved me. I receive this salvation right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise his name. And if you, first time you've done that, you're going to see something at the end of the screen on how to contact us. We have a special gift for you. If you're just coming back to the Lord, hallelujah. After you made that confession, we have a gift for you. Glory be to God. Sometimes we get away because we get caught up. You know, I've seen people, they can go through grief and get away from God. You can go through a financial struggle and get away from God. I mean, you, you're leaving his presence and we need his presence. What do you mean leave his presence? Pastor, you said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. No, but you, you're so caught up in you and so caught up in other things that you forget his presence is there. And you've left him making decisions and doing things without him. But without him, you can't do nothing. Glory be to God. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's offering time. Time to sow a seed. You know, and the Lord's been pressed upon my heart that we're cheerful givers. So today I want you to take a moment and ask the Lord what to sow. Glory be to God. We have many ways you can do it. Whether you go on our webpage, you hit donate, or you can do cash, uh, the cash app. It says AMP. It should be APP app. And the, or you can mail it to us. But we, I want to let you know right now, we appreciate you obeying God and sowing into the kingdom and sowing into Wilmington Christian Center Church Worldwide. We don't take what you sow for lightly and lightly, and neither does God. He appreciates that you're obeying him. You wanna please him, you sow. Glory be God, that's it, you wanna please him. You understand? That's what 2 Corinthians 9, 8, he says, he says, I, I appreciate it. He said, God is, God. he appreciates you giving to him. You're giving something precious to him. And that's the way we please him, by giving him our best gift. Glory be to God. Whether it's a tithe or offering, you're giving him your best. So let's pray today. Father, we thank you that those who give, they don't give grudgingly or necessity because you love us a cheerful giver, people who want to give to you, people who want to please you. 
So as we give today, it's never about the amount, it's about our heart. And we give our best from our heart. Holy Spirit, direct us in our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a moment, let's worship the God. You know, when we give, we worship. Let's just worship him in song. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So let's take a few moments to do that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many need some turnaround? Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing overflow. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing we cannot contain. Let it rain. We're talking about showers of blessings pouring over us. Let it rain. Yes. Under an open heaven. All things, all things. Nothing's too difficult. Nothing's too difficult for you. Nothing's too difficult. Say it again. All things are possible for you. All things are possible. And nothing's for you. too difficult. Nothing's too difficult for you. Nothing's too. I'm ready for some change. Ready for rain. Ready for favor. I know you're Let it overflow. Hey, pour out a blessing we cannot contain. Let it rain, showers of blessing. God's opening windows of heavens for us. Yes, let it rain in every area of your life. All things. All things are possible for you. All things. All things are possible. And nothing's too difficult. Nothing's too difficult for you. Nothing's too difficult. I'm ready for change. Ready for rain. Ready for favor. If God be on your side, He can turn it around. Let it overflow. Pour out a blessing. We cannot contain. Pour out a blessing. Let it overflow. Pour out your blessing, Lord. We cannot contain. How many need some uncontainable blessings? Yes. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have turned my moaning to dancing. You've turned, yes, you have, my sorrow to joy. God has turned my whole life around. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You have turned. Oh, yes, my moaning to dancing. God has turned my sorrow, my whole life around. Yes, He did, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You have turned. Oh yes, God has turned my whole life around. Yes, He has, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You have turned. Oh yeah, hey, hey. God has turned my sorrow into joy, my life around. And I thank you, Lord. I blow sweet kisses to you, Lord. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My sorrow. Woo! You have turned my life around. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Turn it around, wow. Pour out your blessing, Lord. Showers of blessings that we cannot contain. Let 
get him in your life, your heart, he'll pour out blessings, they'll overflow. Hey, pour out your blessing, Lord. We cannot contain. I need some uncontrainable blessings right here, right now. Contain. Hey, hey. very much glory be to god i hope praise god let's let's just speak a word over those who are sold father we thank you that they obeyed you today i thank you for increasing their life i thank you that they will recognize your presence upon their life and the favor upon their life in jesus name amen why don't you stay on hold for a moment you know and uh, listen to our announcements we even have youth church coming up right after this right after this service so let, why don't you just take a few moments to listen to sister carmen and then we'll close out together. Praise God. All right. Good morning again. So we do have some announcements that we would like to share. So if everyone, um, in terms of children, youth and children, we have our youth church and it will take place right after this service ends. So if you have children and youth, definitely get them ready, get them around the, um, the camera around the phone or what have you so that they can participate in our teen and youth church. And if you need to find out how to sign into that, go to our WCCCW.org. It's on the screen, uh, but that will also give you information in terms of Zoom. So we utilize Zoom as our platform when it comes to facilitating that um, service for the youth. Also want to remind everyone that we have um, Sunday service, just like you signed in today, every Sunday at 10 a.m. Every Tuesday, we have corporate prayer. That's at 1230. Every Wednesday, we have midweek morning prayer. That's from 6 a.m. until about 615. And there is a call-in number for that. So definitely go to the WCCCW.org page because we have a contact page, but we also have all of our information about our services. So definitely go there to get the information about calling in to the 6 a.m. call. On Thursdays, we have online Deeper Life Bible study that starts at 7 p.m. And it's, you know, it's powerful. The word is good. No, the word is great. So definitely make sure that you're turning in on Thursday for our online Deeper Life Bible study. Also, we hear and know that there's a need for food. So we are definitely looking for, to, well, we're looking to help people when it comes to those folks who are needing food. So I want to share with folks that there is on Wednesday, there's a food. Give me one minute. I'm sorry. I need to pull up the information. Don't want to tell you anything wrong. But on Wednesday, July 22nd, from 10 a.m. until 4, there's an organization that's providing free food. But you definitely have to call to let them know that you're coming because they are practicing social distancing. So they're scheduling times for people to come. So um, you want to call 302-502-7303 and let them know how many boxes of food that you need. So they're giving out 20-pound uh, boxes of fresh produce. So that's a great thing. But also, if you need to contact Wilmington Christian Center about information about that food drive or any other um, need for food or help or prayer or anything, definitely go to our WCCCW.org um, page. Send us a note. Let us know what you need and someone will be in contact with you. All right. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. And again, we're thinking and praying for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Carmen. I hope you were blessed today. Glory be to God. I hope this word bless you. Go back on and listen to this again. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and hearing that grace of, you know, that word of grace will bless you tremendously. Glory be to God. We're looking forward to seeing you. You heard the announcements on Tuesday for our corporate prayer, 1230, you know, or, or you can get on our webpage and find out about our early morning prayer on Wednesday. You heard those things. So let's you know, this is opportunity for you to do things that are pleasing to him. Rest, rest assured, we wouldn't be doing these things unless he says, here's what my people need. Here's what, to, and it helps you get growing, get you stronger. Glory be God. Don't forget, if you have youth or teens, get them on this, on this Zoom page. I don't care how old your kids are. Listen to me. They're three or four and they can enjoy. They're going to enjoy this and learn more about God. You know, part of our youth and teen ministry is to help you 
as parents. Glory be to God. So your kids will will grow in the word of God. Glory be to God. The Bible says we're going to parents, we're going to be held accountable for how we train up our children in the way in the word of God. And we as a church, we're here to support you. Hope you've been blessed. Hope God has blessed you. I have no doubt he has. Glory be to God. I'm sure you heard something you haven't heard before. He wants to open your eyes so you can see. So let's close out with our, with our confession of faith. Glory be to God. Say, I've been blessed and highly favored. I'm anointed and appointed. I am righteous, never forsaken. My seed will never beg bread. That's why I can boldly say, Satan is defeated. Darkness is dispelled totally from my life because Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. We love you. We thank God for you. Glory be God. And remember, Jesus Christ is absolutely Lord of your life. Have a great day. God bless you.